Hello, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video I want to talk about Ruby hashes. Ruby hashes. So hashes are very important and very useful. Okay, so what's a hash? Well, a hash is like if you're coming from another programming language, a dictionary, like a dictionary. And that's a good word to describe it because a hash allows you to um, associate or put together one value with one key. For example, um, name equals Jesus, or things like that. You or the this word has this definition. That's uh, a hash. You have keys we ha that have values. So every key is unique. Keys are unique. That's important to remember. You can't have a repeated key. And every key, which can be a string, it can be a symbol, can be any object you want, but it needs to be unique inside one hash. Okay? Every key has one value associated with that key. Okay, so yes, it's like a dictionary. And in other languages that are not Ruby, it's called actually a dictionary. But in Ruby, we call it a hash because that's more like the computer science name for this. It's a hash map or hash table. Okay? So in Ruby, the way you create a hash, there is two ways. You can use the hash class and do hash.new. That will give you an empty hash. Or you can use the curly brackets. Uh, the curly brackets is the one that, ha that has like pointy fingers like that. I will show you in code in a moment. Okay? <laughs> so that's two ways to create an empty hash. And you can also create a, create a hash with values in it. Just like an array, you can create an empty array. And you can create an array with values. But the same with a hash. So an array you use square brackets, uh, hash you use the curly brackets, okay? So what kind of things can you do with a hash? Well, you can use them for a lookup table, like a dictionary. You want to have a list of things that are related to other things. Okay, so I'm going to show you one code example for that. So that's very useful. Another very useful use for hash for hashes in Ruby is that uh, you can use them for counting things, counting things, multiple things. So you can count one thing, maybe like uh, I don't know how many letters are in total in this string. Or how many numbers, or how many times does this word appear? But let's say you want to count all the individual words, okay? All of the words. We will need like a different one variable for each word, or something like that. Well, with a hash, we can sol solve that very easily because the word we are counting and um, becomes the key. And the count of the words becomes the value. Okay. So I'm going to show you right now the code examples. Okay. So this is my editor. And let me create a hash for you. So let's just call this hash for simplicity. And this is an empty hash. Like I told you, this is the curly brackets. Okay. Uh, that's an empty hash. Oh no, that's another way to do it. Okay. When shall you use one or the other? Well, most of the time you want to use this one. But it has some special uses that we're going to see in a moment. So stay with me. Let's now create a hash with values in it. So this is how you do that. 
let's say I have, for example, bacon, bacon, and uh, we give this bacon a value of 300. This is an arbitrary number, okay, just to demonstrate how you do this. So, bacon, like this, this is the key, okay, and this is the value. If we want to print, if we want to print the value for this key, we do it like that. So notice on my right of the screen, this is the output of this program, 300, 300, okay? So that's the value associated with this key. And of course, you can have more than one key, we can add like another key by name and let's say this is my name okay and we can do the same we can print it the same way there you go so notice one thing in here the key is like this the colon is after the key name so these are symbols okay and then when you access it, the position of the colon is in reverse. I know it can be a bit confusing, but you need to pay attention to this, okay? So the colon is first when you want to access, but in here the colon is after, okay? So notice that. And also notice that, that if we repeat a key, since keys have to be unique, we are going to overwrite the value, as you can see there. And in fact, we get a warning. It's duplicated and overwrited on line 5. You don't want to do that. Keys are meant to be unique. Okay? Keys are meant to be unique. So, how do you change the value for a key? Well, very easily you can do that. Like this. Hash. We act, it's the same as accessing the key value but with an equal sign. So now, now let's make this 200 or 100 and you see now the value has update as you can see there on the right. Okay you can also see then whole hash so you can see what's inside and you can do that using the P method and it gives us our hash like that what more things can you do with hash well you can print the keys if you want like this um, hash the keys this can be very useful as well if you are working with a hash that you don't know what keys are available you can do that as you can see let me delete this. So you can see the keys are bacon and name. Okay. And if you add more keys, you will get more keys in there. So notice that it always need to be key and value. Key and value. You can't just have a key because it doesn't make sense in the world of Ruby to do that. It needs to be a key and then a value. And also the key can be a string, okay, so it could be a h, but then you need to use this slightly different syntax, this is a hash rocket, okay, and there you go. Now to access this key, it needs to be like that, push hash, like this, so notice that, okay. The key is a string and it's working. So, another thing I like for hashes, I like to format them like this. If you have multiple values, so that's easier to read that any white line. And notice one thing very important this comma. Don't forget this comma, or you will get this little error right there syntax error okay syntax error is always have to do with commas 
um, parentheses, brackets, things like that. So now we fix our error, we are back to working. So don't forget your commas. And the last one doesn't need a comma, it's optional. Okay? So let me show you more examples. So I have this example. I talk about how you can use a hash in your programs to create dictionaries of values or maps of values, map this value to this other value. So instead of doing like an if statement, you can just use this hash. So this saves you to for the for doing something like if um country code equals to UK then it is this. Right? You don't have to do this. You don't need to do this. You can just query your hash. So how do you do that? Well, we just saw it like this. And there goes our output on the right. And you can do US or anything you want. And of course, as a reminder, don't forget your commas. Don't forget your opening and closing curly brackets, okay? Uh, make sure your key is right, spelled right, okay? So one more example for you. This is a little more advanced, but it's also very interesting and useful. So what we are going to do here is count, count the words. So I have this hash. So this is what I told you uh, a few minutes ago, that you can use hash.new for some special purpose. And this purpose is that this creates a default value. And the default value is zero, okay? So why? Why do we need a default value? Because we are counting. Since we are counting, we need a value to start from. Okay, so we start from zero and then we, for each word that we find, we add plus one. Okay, so next line, I'm defining my words as a string and then I split them. So this makes it an array of words. I call also do this so I don't have to split them. Okay. So this just save me a step if I already have the strings in this format. If not, you can use a split, which by default splits by empty spaces. Okay. So that's that. Now next step is this words dot each. And what this does is that it goes over every word inside the words array. And then inside this block, we tell it what to do. Well, what do we want to do? We want it to count. So we use our count hash, which defaults to zero because of this. Okay. And then this is how we access the, the value. The key becomes the word. Okay, the word is the key. And then we say plus one, plus equals one, okay? So we are adding one. Now if we print this, the value of count, we will see that there are two hellos and one there. As you see, let me delete this so it's more clear, okay? So we can see that hello two, meaning it was found two times, and there one, because we only have the word there once. And we can change this array. We add another hello. You will see that it says hello free and there, hello free and there one. Okay? So this is very useful. 
whenever you want to count something that are multiple instance of okay so a quick review this is how you create an empty hash with a, either this syntax or this syntax and this is how you create a hash with values so this is a symbol this is the value the symbol is the key what goes on the left is always the key okay on the right we have the value and we can also have a string as key but when you use a string you need this this syntax okay also don't forget your commas you forget a comma you're going to say uh, get a syntax error next we have the access no the update you update with this we can update the value of this key so now it was 300 now it becomes 100 now we can print the values for these keys and finally we can print the all of the keys and it comes out as, a, as an array and we can also print the key that was in the form of a string like that okay so that's ruby hashes for you hope you found this video useful uh, if you did please share it and give me a like on youtube and subscribe to this channel for more content like this okay and thanks you for thanks for your time thanks for watching see you in another video